A staple within the Black Iconic Movies Collective, despite its lingering controversy and mixed reviews, the Friday movie series holds up to be one of the most quoted and one of the most bootlegged series of all time. Nonetheless, they went on to catapult the careers of up-and-coming future icons like Chris Tucker, Bernie Mac, and Cat Williams. But some of the cast members seem to have disappeared into an oblivion. Model and actress and OG Fantana, Karen Denise Aubert, caught all of our attention when she was casted as the role of Donna in Friday After Next, and her career only skyrocketed from there. Deem the Black Angelina Jolie, KD's spiritual ties and Christian faith almost halted her from becoming the Donna we all know and love. Nevertheless, she'd go on to feature in Maxim's Hot 100 three years in a row, and even shot her shot at rapping. So how did KD go from being involved in a church and getting baptized every Sunday to becoming a video vixen and where is she now? This is what happened to KD Bear. Following the success of the first Friday movie, Ice Cube went on to create two more Friday films, Next Friday and Friday After Next, which didn't quite gain the massive cult-like following that the original Friday movie garnered. Playing submissive and mistreated sidekick and girlfriend to Cat Williams' character Money Mike, eating in the upkeep of their boutique, the Pimp and Hole Shop, we'd see Ice Cube's character Craig take an interest in her and ultimately get her away from her toxic boyfriend. Her role as Donna shot her into the mainstream side of Hollywood. But before we really get into the thick of it, let's take it all the way back to humble beginnings. Born in Shreveport, Louisiana, but raised in California, KD was born to a very young mother who wasn't like the other moms around her. The oldest of seven siblings, despite KD being known more so for her gorgeous looks, she wasn't always the KD we've come to know over the years. As a child, she was more on the tomboyish side, dabbling into baseball and later on softball, where she'd play all the way into university. Being a black teen of the 90s, all hair everything was a huge deal and KD would find herself hanging at her local hair salons near her school, entertaining the hairstylist and putting on hair shows with her friends. One day, a student and photographer at her university asked to take pics of her with her fresh new do, to which KD obliged. Little did she know, this would be the start to a career she never even knew she wanted. With the flick still capturing and the shot still flashing, she'd end up in numerous hair-related magazines. And with the encouragement from peers, would end up shooting her shot at modeling agencies who routinely rejected her and told her she was too fat to step into the modeling world. The constant rejection sent Katie packing her bags, wiping her hands, and throwing in the towel, picking up a behind-the-counter makeup job at Macy's. Except she wasn't really throwing in the towel, and the job was being used as a stepping stool in order to break into the industry, by any means necessary. Teenage KD was all about the church and held on to her faith, going as far to get baptized every Sunday. She was determined and destined to make it somehow, despite her weight, and that's exactly what she'd achieve. One day, while minding her business behind the counter, a woman came up to her and suggested that she'd model, unbeknownst to the woman who KD informed of her past modeling attempts. The lady basically said, that ain't no problem, and referred KD to her daughter, who ended up being a plus-sized model herself, who then referred KD to her roommate, who turned out to be no other than Eric Lively, who'd refer KD to multiple modeling agencies. At this point, she'd gotten signed to LA Models and KD's career was up and stuck from here on out. Aside from modeling, KD went through her video vixen, video girl phase beginning in the early 2000s when she was chosen to be part of the Brat and Tyrese music video for their song, What You Like. She went on to appear in Fabulous and P. Diddy's 2002 video for their song, Trade It All Part 2 before getting the role that positively changed the trajectory of her career. Krista Clayman, one of the people in charge of overseeing KD's career, had advised KD to take her chance at commercials and television. Chosen to co-host the MTV show Kidnapped, she'd appear in a wave of other commercials and TV shows before being casted as Donna and Ice Cube's Friday After Next. After a quick audition, her agency had set up for her. 
Sticking to her Christian beliefs, she had originally turned down the offer due to the film's plot and overall atmosphere consisting of weed and explicit content. This coincidentally being relatively similar to Chris Tucker's, who played the role of Smokey in the first Friday film, reasoning for dropping out of the next Friday movie. KD recalls the experience playing Donna as being much fun and overall amazing. Being the new kid on the block along with Cat Williams, the two stuck beside each other and fortunately enough would be casted in a way where they'd have no choice but to be by each other's sides at all times. After her run on the movie, she went on to star in other countless music videos for Lloyd, Ludacris, Neo, 50 Cent, and more. This inspired her to dabble into the music side of things under the pseudonym KD Rose. She went on to star in other commercials and projects like Disenchanted, before being casted in her next breakout role as Giselle in the 2004 film Soul Plane, alongside Kevin Hart, Monique, some more, Godfrey, Lonnie Love, Method Man, and many upcoming icons. This is where she'd also get the chance to link back up with Terry Crews and John Witherspoon, whom she had previously worked with in Friday After Next. She went on to feature on Maxim's Hot 100 three times in a row, and was later chosen as the Strawberry Fantana to star in the original commercial as one-fourth of the Fantana Girls for the Fanta Soda brand. Going on to appear in other films, TV shows, and commercials alongside celebs like George Clooney and has appeared on shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Bones, The Entourage, CSI NY, Key and Peele, The Grand, and more. In regards to KD's career, she admitted to being semi-blackballed by a certain someone who tried sabotaging her career based on hearsay. Apparently, the person had been telling other casting directors and execs that KD was difficult to work with, to which KD denies. If it's one thing you want to stay clear of, it's being that one person on set who was difficult to work with. She compared the blackballing to the blackballing of dark-skinned Aunt Viv from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The overall reason as to why you don't hear much of KD Auber anymore is due to her lack of skills at playing the Hollywood game. She was never into the whole click thing and found it slightly difficult to make genuine friends in an industry such as the one she had partaken in. She'd often call some of her castmates up after filming wrapped just to be paid dust and just didn't care enough to make her career within the entertainment industry bigger than what it was. Established in the early 2000s, she began a long-term relationship with Jeff Bowler, co-founder of IMG, but is now currently single and hopes of getting married one day. In 2018, she won an Africa Movie Academy Award for her role in Turning Point and continues to seek work whenever she's in the States. She currently has a citizenship and resides in the South region of France and describes it as living a double life compared to her popularity and chaotic lifestyle in the States, where all of us probably have some form of PTSD and pretend as though America isn't just a third world country at this point held together by a Gucci belt. All in all, KD is perfectly happy where she's at in her career and says even if her work as an actress, model, or whatever else doesn't work out, she'll be okay. That's nice and all, KD, but we're gonna need you for the next Friday movie. Someone please hit up Ice Q? Stat? Did any of this surprise you? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. And stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.